As you can see, there's rocks flying everywhere. So this is the first proper outing today with the 7D Mark II. And uh, I mentioned in my last video that to give this a fair comparison to the Pentax cameras that I normally shoot with, I'm gonna have to put a bit of time on the 7D Mark II. So that's what I'll be doing today. This is the first outing at the Enduro. And um, you know, I'm gonna put some time on it, get to know the camera. I brought the Pentax K3 with me as well. And I'll probably switch over halfway through the day. And um, that's just like a fail safe, you know, cause I need to get the, the shots of the riders as well as uh, documenting this. But yeah, if you haven't seen the, the previous video to this, if you didn't even know I had a 7D Mark II, I'll leave a link um, to that video in the, in the description below. You can check that out. I give me reasons why I've actually bought this camera at this point in time. Um, and it's quite funny because the R7, the Canon R7's just come out, the new mirrorless camera to replace the, the 7D Mark II. And it's been a long time coming that camera from what I've seen. Um, I, when I did a little bit of research, the 7D Mark II did come out in 2014. So it's, you know, it's took uh, the better part of eight years for the, the 7D Mark III really to come out. But yeah, as I say, check that video out if you haven't seen it. And today I'm gonna to be putting the 7D Mark II through its paces for some fast action, what the camera was designed for, remember? And let's see if it uh, lives up to the expectations. Initial impressions I'll be uh, doing today of the camera. So we'll see how this goes. Stick around, see what you think, see what the shots end up like, more importantly. That's uh, the, the, you know, the, uh, what's the, the saying? The, uh, something in the pudding. Comment down below, or I'll correct myself right now on the screen. All I'm thinking about is like settings, what I should be doing, all the rest of it. But yeah, we'll be at the, at the track in no time, and you'll get to see what the uh, enduro is like. So I'll see you when we're there. Okay, so let's see what I've got in the kit bag. Of course, we've got the 7D Mark II and the 70 to 200 F4 lens on. And this is the weather sealed one. I specifically bought that lens for this type of stuff. I've also got the Canon M100, what I usually use to video with. I've got me um, weatherproof coat for the backpack in case it uh, lashes it down. And I've got me little mini tripod in there. Spare batteries, of course. And then over here, I've got the trusty K3, Pentax K3 with the 55 to 300 PLM. And that's also a weather resistant setup. Um, I've got some flashes and stuff in there, but I won't be using those today. Yeah, just in the kit bag as always. So yeah, that's the, uh, the kit that I've got for today. Obviously I'm on a GoPro here as well. It's only a little Hero 5, um, but it does the job, does the job. We, the biggest thing what we need for this type of stuff is the weather sailing because it's always uh, dusty or wet and muddy. You know, the conditions are pretty harsh at these type of events. But yeah, we're gonna see what we can get today with this Canon. I'm uh, pretty excited to use this because um, when I was out with it the other day, if you'd have checked that first video out, that was my first outing with it. Um, I tried the, <laughs> the 10 frames per second and um, it is like a little machine gun. So I'm gonna have a little play around with that today. That's not usually my shooting style. I usually time my shots and wait for the action to come to me. And um, if you've seen any of my videos before, you'll, you'll know that. But you know, the style might change a little bit with this camera. Might be a bit more of, um, you know, machine gun style, we'll see. I don't really want thousands of images to go through though. I try and get it right first time if you can. But it's more options, isn't it? That's the thing what it opens up. What I'm really looking forward to is seeing how good this autofocus system is in comparison to the Pentax. So that'll be interesting for me today. I think that's the main thing I wanna sort of concentrate on for the day, is getting used to the, the new autofocus system on the Canon. And we'll see what shots we come away with today. Hopefully, we'll get some good ones. Um, I'm sure we will, and if not, it'll be straight back in the boot and the Pentax will be coming out. So I'll see you when we're around the track. I'll show you the, um, the initial settings, or I'll go back home and show you the settings, what I've used on the table, and we'll have a bit of a chat about it. But um, yeah, I'm gonna get to it now. 
hopefully get some good photos and I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so before the action kicks off, I'm gonna talk you through a few of the settings that I've um, initially put on the, the 7D Mark II. I've got the camera set up, just going by the conditions what we're in today, it's overcast, um, it's fairly cloudy, so we've got like flat light. Um, I'm shooting at f4, I'm always going to shoot wide open on this type of stuff uh, because you don't need the, well I want to let as much light in the lens as possible to have the fastest shutter speed, so I'm at f4, it's hovering around 400-500 ISO at 1000, um, 1 over 1000 of a second, usually I like to shoot a little bit faster than that, 1 over 1 2 50th of a second is you know the ideal or even higher if you can but I want to keep the ISO below a thousand today if possible because I've um, you know when I was looking at this camera before I bought it it doesn't have the dynamic range of the Pentax stuff so I want to keep that in mind yes I can uh, prat around in post-production and uh, do some noise reduction and all the rest of it but just to be on the Air on the side of caution, I'm going to try and uh, keep it at those settings roundabout. I'm actually shooting on auto ISO, I've configured, configured the camera so that I've got control of the shutter and the aperture, but I've got the camera to figure out the auto ISO. For sports, I think that is, you know, it's the way forward really. For me anyway, personally, it works for me. Other people might shoot differently, but I like doing that. And yeah, I think that's the general the setup, as I said, the, the lens, what we've got is the EF 70 to 200 F4. It's the IS version, um, image stabilization. And it's got the weather sealing on it, which is a must, obviously, I've, like I've explained for this type of stuff. So that's the initial settings. Um, we're gonna find a, a spot. I know there's a river crossing down here. Um, so we'll, we'll see if we can get some action going through there. Okay, so this is one of the, the type of things that the Pentax system initially struggles with is we've got a, a section of the course here where the riders are coming down at quite a bit of a speed um, and they're coming directly towards you. Um, you know, I don't ever have any trouble with panning shots, jump shots, all that, corner shots with the Pentax system. The only time I've ever had any type of trouble with the autofocus system is maintaining focus while the riders are coming towards you like and having it recompose the focus that auto focus system working properly basically i've just fired a, the first couple of shots off with the cannon there and um, the settings were as i described but i went up to one over one two fiftieth of a second track the riders no problem coming towards us um, i'm going to go over the the auto focus fine-tune settings that I put on the Canon before I came out because as you do I was watching a few videos you know clue myself up on the, on the how to make it work and um, I can tell already that this this is tracking really well for the the action coming towards you and it's key it's readjusting and locking focus back onto the riders I'll just show you what the this is a sighting lap so they're not going as fast as what they normally would but they're just coming down here straight on as you can see, it's a good test for that type of stuff. They're just coming straight down. And the sight and lap, this is the first lap round. The riders are just getting to know the course, but once this lap's over, they're going to be going hell for leather. So it'll be a good test. And as I say, I've got the, the K3 in the backpack with the PLM lens on, which in my opinion 
is the best choice for sports fast action for the Pentax system and it's a it's a zoom lens um, it's external focusing where the you know it's not internal so it can suck dust in which is a bit of a problem sometimes because I have to put a carrier bag over the lens like I probably will do today when it uh, starts lashing down but yeah this is going to be interesting already I can see what people are talking about with the first couple of shots I've took of this so it's uh, maybe going to be a little bit of an eye opener for me and uh, who knows you know going forward with things yeah, we say it, we might be using the cannon a little bit more for the, the sports. How dare you? You have stolen my dreams, my childhood, with your empty words. Interesting. But, again, I'm not just going to be comparing this camera to the Pentax stuff on autofocus alone. It's going to be interesting to compare it with the dynamic range and like how... Uh, how clean the files are. I think that's going to be a bit of a telling story. So there's some more riders coming down now. I'm going to crack on, get them shot. You know what I mean? Shoot them. Not in terms of like that, but yeah. Take the pictures. Okay, so, um, it's coming towards the end of the day and I, uh, I haven't switched over. I haven't switched over to the Pentax. I think what I found is instantly is that this camera, the 7D Mark II, it, um, it tackles oncoming subjects really well in comparison to the uh, K3, the K3 Mark II, the K5, um, the K70, all of which are the Pentax cameras that I've used for this type of stuff, for action sports, motocross, enduro. Um, I'm going to finish out the day with this camera. We're currently sat on 507 images and I've been chimping, I've been looking on the back. A lot of them are in focus, you know, so it'll be interesting to see the keeper rate, what I get today. I still need to get used to the camera because I find myself like I'm looking for the back dial. On the Pentax bodies, you've got your um, aperture on the back, your shutter on the front, or whichever way you want to set it up. But yeah, I'm going to leave you with some footage now of me getting roosted by these uh, riders. And I'll just be talking as I'm going through it, telling you the settings. We're currently at 1 ISO 160 F4. And what I found is as well, I'm not having to be at higher shutter speeds as much as what the motocross is because the Enduro apart from the fast sections, is slower. So I'm able to keep the ISO down. So let's check these guys out. And then after this, we're going for some scran. I'm absolutely starving. Fancy a chip butty or something like. Chip butty and a couple of beers. And get editing, see what these files are like. So I'm uh, composing the image with the rider in the top left hand side of the frame. As I say, 1 8 hundredth of a second, F4. We're on ISO 250 now. And we're just going to fire the single shots off as these riders come through. So as you can see, it's pretty dusty now. And we've got the, the tree directly behind the rider, which is acting like a sort of backdrop. It's uh, saved us today with the, the sky being overcast. We're not having to worry too much about blowing the highlights out. And what I, I've, I've noticed straight away on this is, though, that 
if I just leave it to decide the exposure itself, i.e. I'm controlling the shutter and the aperture, the camera's taking care of the ISO, it's some of the white parts of the rider's helmets and stuff are bleeping like as if they overexposed, where on the K3, especially on my Pentax K3, if I leave it on a, a neutral exposure, or what the camera deems to be a neutral exposure, it underexposes slightly. I don't know if that's, I think it is actually a little bit of a, a known thing with the Pentax K3. I've not had enough time on the K3 Mark II actually yet to, to see if that's the case. I just, um, I was always shooting with the K3 for this type of stuff over the last year and a half basically, maybe it's even two years. Um, but I am impressed with this and I think the lens has helped out a lot. It's, it is instant. What is it, what these class, USM. PLM on the Pentax. Um, I'll input what they are in the description down below or over the, the video now. Off the top of my head. I've had too many fumes, bit of two stroke. Light headed, also hungry. They're quite good shots actually these. They're looking all right. Oh. As you can see, there's rocks flying everywhere pretty hardcore like but yeah so far so good I'm I'm really enjoying uh, using this camera actually and the menu surprisingly enough coming from the M100 that I use for video most of the time the menu on the Canon systems um, easy to navigate it's the same as that M100 more or less just a few different autofocus menu settings and stuff um, and between the two you know I don't know what other people think, but on the, the Pentax system and the Canon menu, I find them two of the, I've, I've used um, Nikon's, the only other one I've used, and Samsung, an old Samsung NX1000. But the menu system on the Canon and on the Pentax seem to be intuitive. Both of them are easy to use. It's, things are set up in the right places. I've no trouble like just adapting to this. I think it did help, as I say using the M100 to do video. I don't really use that camera for photo because it hasn't got a, a viewfinder. It's just the back screen on that camera. It's basically the same as the M50, but without a viewfinder. And maybe there's a few other little features taken away. It's not a bad camera though, and it's got the dual pixel autofocus, which really does help out for video. Um, I've yet to try this obviously in video. But I think this was the first camera that came out with that dual pixel autofocus, just off research anyway. Oh, stone spray, stone spray. We are getting some decent images though. It's looking good. We'll just get one of this guy stopped here. Nice, nice portrait, bike portrait type of thing. But yeah, the um, the 7200, it really does help out fast focusing. When I was doing a bit of research on what lens to buy, I, I, at first I wanted the 55 to 300 equivalent so I think from Canon, that's either a 70 to 300 or a 75 to 300. And they do a, a, a consumer lens with no weather sealing or nothing like that. And it doesn't have very good reviews. Or they do the L series stuff. Or I think they do something in the middle as well, actually, uh, like a prosumer. And that's what I was going to get. But when I seen that you could get these for around the same price um, at the time, I don't know if I was lucky or not, but I picked this up for a, what I could have got one of the 55 or the 75 to 300s for. So I just went with this. F4 is nice to have um, throughout the focal range. And it does help with separation. And obviously the most important part is that you get your fast shutter speeds. I could have went with the 2.8, but couldn't afford it. And with this just being an experiment at the moment, this camera, um, I didn't see the you know, I couldn't warrant it really, because that was pretty pricey. I just didn't know how this was going to perform. But so far, so good. I'm happy with it. And I'm sure as the time, I put more time on it, I'm going to get more used to this. 
and um, we'll probably get better images. But I think we'll call it a day there. I've got enough, um, enough images. We had sat about 550, 600 shots today. Um, not a bad outing for the first, first outing with the camera. I've enjoyed it. Um, it's, it, you know, like I say, I've got, I've got on with it well straight away. The fast focusing lens, I'm a, I am amazed at the, uh, how well it focuses with stuff coming towards you. That's the big thing that I've struggled with in the past where I've only been able to get a couple of shots, maximum like three shots in a row of riders coming towards you where this, I think you can just, I actually haven't held the uh, shutter down. I've just been doing single shots today like, so before I go, I might uh, put it on the 10 frames per second and uh, give it a bit of machine gun style. <laughs> but yeah, if uh, you found any value in this and you want to see what I do going forward and how I get on with this and compare it obviously to the Pentax, give the video a thumbs up. Um, it means a lot if you can subscribe. Again, we're nearly a thousand subscribers. And um, yeah, it's all good. I'll see you in the next video. I'm out for now.